You've probably heard the saying, democracy dies in darkness. It's the official slogan of the Washington Post newspaper, but it originated with a federal judge who was trying a government secrecy case just before Watergate. I think it captures the work journalists try to do. It's also why we bring you so many stories examining the way our government is working or not working and how it could be better. In fact, we have another story on that topic in our show for you tonight in just a few minutes. But first, I want to talk about local journalism and the next generation, some of whom are at the University of Oregon right now. There's a bit of turmoil around their student-run news show. In fact, it's off the air right now. Here's some background, and here's a look at their show. The students produce a weekly news show called Duck TV. It's run by the students. They research the stories, conduct the interviews, shoot the video, and put together a half-hour broadcast. We talked with Eric, one of the producers. We have weekly pitch meetings where we pitch stories as a producer. We pick the stories and assign them to the reporters who work in teams. And then they have the week to produce that story, everything from conducting interviews, filming B-roll, editing, then they'll turn it in as the producers will put that broadcast together. And then we will, the following pitch meeting, we'll, we'll watch the broadcast, critique it, assign stories for the next week. The following day, it'll be released to the public and um, air for the public. Programs like Duck TV are crucial to learning a profession like broadcast journalism because it's not just book learning. There is a hands-on craft to learn, how to use a camera, how to ask good questions, how to take good notes everything that goes into a news story and a news show. Duck TV has been around for decades and many people who now work in news throughout the Northwest say Duck TV helped them learn what they needed to know to get their jobs. But now the students who run the show say the university is not letting them do it anymore and they worry it may not come back. The show has been indefinitely canceled, put on hold anyway. The School of Journalism and the communications at the university say they want to rework the entire program and potentially build something new. The administrators say the program has just gotten too big for them to be able to handle and that it's created some issues. There has been traditionally um, a one credit class and that one credit class started as a 30 person class and ballooned up to about 150. And, and that just is not sustainable as, as was. So um, we're looking for ways to make the experience part more sustainable and the capacity to be able to uh, deliver, you know, both support in terms of gear and in terms of space in a way that students really develop skills. It is great that so many want to take part, but bigger is not always better. If there's not enough gear or enough chances to get involved, that's very frustrating. The school says they don't have the faculty available to manage such a big group, and they're concerned that not everyone's being treated fairly. We want to be able to give them uh, more tools to be successful um, and more ways of thinking about those tools. We want them to have a diversity statement. We want them to make sure that credentialing is fair and ethical. We want them to uh, be able to have reps, 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 and, and do so in the best way, right? So, um, so as frustrating as this is for students and for alum and for faculty and all of this, I think the core idea is how do we build the best TV, Duck TV, that we possibly can? The students say the process has left them without any way to produce their show, and they've been left in the dark, they say, while administrators take the reins. The university has floated plans to turn Duck TV into a series of workshops or maybe limit it to upper level students. Those involved now say it just won't be the same. Duck TV has offered me that really hands on in the field learning that you cannot replicate in a classroom. I've gotten to go in the field and produce stories, talk with community members, meet real journalists, work alongside them. And that's something that you really just can't replicate sitting in a classroom for a couple hours, uh, two times a week. Um, the stories we produce have a real impact. Um, they get you know, shared on social media. We, uh, people feel like their voices are heard when we cover their stories. And that's something that is you know, meaningful to me as a journalist and everyone else at Duck TV. 
One of the many people working in TV who are Duck TV alums is our own Galen Etlin. Galen, how did working on Duck TV prepare you for this job? Yeah, Pat, I would say Duck TV was a great gateway to broadcast. It was an extracurricular, not a formal class. And there was just one story that we had to produce per week compared to the many that we produce in a day sometimes. So there were also occasional chances to anchor in studio, really diverse experience. As you know, broadcast and reality is really tough. A lot of us even now shoot, write, and edit the content that we air here. So Duck TV was a really good chance to use the gear and decide, is this something that I want to do in the future? I would say for me personally, Duck TV alone could not really prepare me for my first TV job in a real newsroom, but it was certainly one of the stepping stones. I definitely needed more practice in some of the more involved broadcast courses at U of O and the hands-on experience I also got from newsroom internships. So I understand, I hear the frustration by students going through this. It is a valuable program. So I urge those interested in broadcast, if they're missing out on it right now, to connect with people like us in the industry because it's really the best way, I would say, to learn and navigate this crazy business we call TV. All right, thank you, Galen. You're obviously very professional now. And by the way, get ready for your inbox to be filled with emails from students. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. And we should also mention that other alumni have started campaigning to save the show, and administrators say they are going to meet with the students as the process moves forward. But they did not provide any kind of timeline for when the show would be back.